Now that we have the underpinning done, let's get a look at what we can do for the middle ground and the foreground. Turn it around so I can see it. I wish there was a way I could set this up so that you could see me working on it while it's right side up, but uh, that's not how my desk is set up, so you gotta act. you're gonna get to see it just like you're sitting next to me. Okay? That's how we've been doing these. The ground has to be a little lighter than the mountains. The mountains are darker than the sky. The ground has to be darker than the sky to properly follow with what Carlson says about it. But let's see what happens when we add some more trees in the distance. Over here, it just looks like the ground stops short of the distant tree, stops short of the mountains, but we can use brown as kind of an underdrawing, really, on a hedgerow of a few more trees. And I'm using brown here on purpose because I'm going to mute that really bright green. We want cool colors in the distance, but we do want a hue change and a value change from what's going on in the mountains. Now that's too light, so we're going to experiment mixing some more colors into it, like that nice dark blue. Oh yeah. So now these distant trees are getting shaded. See, I'm not even drawing shaded trees particularly. I'm just doing these little blobby shapes. They're very abstracted trees. They can be, because you know, you're not right on top of them. Let's get a little violet in there, too, just to further mute it. Muted colors recede in the distance. Bright colors don't. Go over that with the blue to keep it in the blue and green range. And also you can see that it's more of a blue-green than the foliage up here on the trees that are nearer to us. That's not quite green enough. So we'll get a touch more yellow in. The process of mixing color like this is gradual. You keep approximating what you want until you get it. White has a tendency to both cool colors as well as lightening them. And you can see the trees in the distance. They have light on them. They have dark under them. They're three-dimensional. They're not very big. Everything that's that far away is going to look tiny. Everything that's nearer is going to look bigger. So we have the nearest tree, the middle distance tree, and the very distant trees that are kind of getting ready to climb up the mountain. I don't think we need any over here. We'll just have some rocks, maybe. Get that going in a gray, almost. Yeah black with then the white over it. We can create a sort of distant rocky clump. That gives the painting a little bit of symmetry, but it's not exactly the same as what I did on the other side. That blends into the mountains pretty well. Now we need to do something about this dirt. Everything in the distance is cooler. So we're going to go over it a little with the blue here and just bring that forward. But these are also like green golden fields of grass or dirt or something. So we'll get some green into it. Still, we can go lighter than we did on the tops of the trees because the ground is flat. The flat ground reflects more light than the vertical trees. We're going to carry this green all the way down to the front. But over here, where we start getting closer, we're going to play with it some more. So this is yet another underlayer. Most of what I'm doing now is going to be dry. I may swipe over it to smooth out the color once in a while, but I may be able to do this just with strokes. Use them dry. Now, I'm using the white over the green to blur it together. I'm making very short diagonal strokes in this direction. That creates something like a grass texture. You can see it's becoming a very bluey gray 
over there, very misty looking. It's right off by the mountains in the far distance. Let's get the happy little grasses in. Yeah, I know, I'm not Bob Ross. There was only one original. <laughs> we got the shore of the lake, which is showing a little brown there, and that's okay. Why don't we just touch that up with a little more brown and go over that with the white, too. Okay, let's have a sandy bank here. Sandy bank and then white to make it a light sandy color. All right. It's a subtle effect. I don't want anything too obvious going on there. In fact, I don't like it, so I'm going to throw some more green there. Break it up, not make it a continuous line. We can have patches of different hues coming, too. Not everything has to be in a perfect line or a perfect clump. This is like the wild. It's not a garden. Now, I'm going to take a little yellow and go over the grassy stuff as we approach the foreground. This is by no means going to be the final color for it, but we're going to put it into the mixture here because warm colors come forward. And this is toning the green in the foreground to be more of a yellow green. Like it's a nice moist climate. There's plenty of rain. We're out in the summer. Oh, this is nice. This is going to be some good weather. We're going to work on the ground here. We'll go back to that bright green and go over the yellow. Now this time, I'm not doing the burnishing strokes. I'm doing those grass strokes, but I'm making them a little more visible, a little sturdier. Always keeping that direction from lower left to upper right, because with that texture, I'm giving an impression of grass. And the strokes get longer the more I come towards the front, because those grasses are closer to you, closer to the viewer. Now over here, some sandy banks show, but they really wouldn't because uh, your grass is coming up there. So let's give that a little texture. Now, warm colors come forward. So let's darken this grass just a little with a few stray strokes of the brown. You can go ahead and make this in patches, too. Doesn't have to be even. Remember, you get some places where the plants will grow a little messy and others where they get trodden patches. I washed in the purple shadows we had there, so we're going to get that. Let's go over those with green. Continue the grass texture, but you can still see the dark purple shadows under it. And you can still see some of the roots of the tree, too. So let's pick up that purple again and get that going in the shadows. This time with distinct, visible, painterly strokes. Having an irregular edge to this patch of grass looks much more like a bunny on grass. But back here, we can't have strokes that obvious. So we're just going to do strokes over the whole shadow area and then touch into it a little bit with something a little colder than the red violet. We'll make the shadow back here a bit more blue. There we go. That gives more of a sense of distance too. We'll use a little of the blue in the near shadow where it's darkest. Notice I have not picked up the black much of anywhere except where I was mixing gray. You don't need it. Black exists mostly to be a darkener, and it's a darkener like white that mutes. Both black and white will cool what you're doing and make it less saturated and less colorful. 